Um, so this is just more of a go with the flow sort of video. Um, I wanted to discuss a saying that I hear a lot and it's the many are called, but only a few are chosen. And, um, I say this because I think there's this idea that this thing of specialness or that somehow some people are closer to God than other people. And that's not, that's not true. Everyone, everyone breathing or whatever, uh, everyone has their own connection to God or to spirit. And no one person is more elevated or better than the other. And from my perspective, many are called, but only a few are chosen. The few that have been chosen are the ones who do the work and the ones who make it their business to actually connect to God versus um, taking a more lazy approach to their their connection or their work with with spirit. That's just my perspective. And there are no such thing as <clears throat> Uh, the chosen ones or this idea that they, like there's a whole 144 you know thousand thing and for some people it may be you know this special tribe but for me I don't I haven't come to fully understand what that 144,000 means to me I don't think it has to do with a specific group of people um, or this quote unquote uh, the enlightened ones or any of uh, any of that again this is <clears throat> this is mythology and story um, so when you say you're a part of the 144,000 well whose 144,000 are you a part of what have you signed up for what have you claimed over your life if you say you're part of this quote-unquote club and what does that even mean and what does that do for you when you're on earth like everyone else having the same experiences there's not there's no one or nobody or whatever more special than the other person you're only as special as your work ethic and the work that you apply to your spirit your your spirituality your work your religion your connection to god your connection to spirit what what is it that um you know how you define that relationship for yourself not just specialness off the bat because you're some uh, divine entity or some, or some divine being that's come to enlighten the rest because you're somehow more advanced. Um, that isn't the case if you're having to come to earth to learn, you know, or to, you're, you're, you're here with the, you, you're here with the minions, you know. It's okay to say you're a minion. <laughs> you're here with the minions. You're, you're not... You're you're nothing special. We're we're all special people. We're, we're we all have a divine connection to God, uh, and it just takes more people have some people have done more work than others, uh, but everyone has the ability to do the same work that whoever has done to strengthen their connection to God, to their intuition, to spirit. So this whole idea of you know, many are called, but few are chosen, and, and you're one of the greatest, you're, you're one of the ones to, you know, change the tides. It's just kind of comical. Uh, everyone is here to do their own personal work, and uh, it's best to empower people to develop their own connection to spirit. But many are called, and only a few are chosen, is because the few that are chosen have done the work, and that's simple not because they're special. Um, and there are no chosen ones because if you're a saint, you've been a sinner. And a sinner becomes a saint. And a saint was a sinner, you know. And it's interesting how you have people who are religious or spiritual, whatever it may be, who feel that now they stand on some sort of pedestal because they've overcome their quote-unquote demons that they can stand on some pedestal and tell everybody else, you know, they, they, they can condemn 
someone else for their lifestyle. Meanwhile, they led a lifestyle that was even more, you know, disgusting and or, uh, you know, unlike God or whatnot, you know, let what is it? Let he without sin be the first to cast stone. So nobody should be really saying anything um, because we've all done dirt. You know, if you're going to if you're going to love the saint, love the sinner. That's how I see it. You know, there there is no separation between the two. Um, that's I just wanted to speak on that. And this whole movement of chosen ones, you know, the chosen ones, they're hating on you because nobody's hating on you. It, nobody cares about you, you know? You're, you're not, you know, just like the whole gang stalking thing. Do you really think people care enough about you? It, it really is this illu- the, the illusion of grandeur, you know? This idea that you're more than what you are. And nobody's stalking you, nobody cares about you. Everyone has gifts, everyone has talents that if they were to hone, they'd be, you know, they they all be special. We all be special. You know what I mean? Um, so there is nothing particularly special about you. You've done the work, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. And other people can do the work as well. So this idea that you know the chosen ones. This message is for you. If 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 you know, I, I just think it's kind of comical and a bit just weird you know what I mean that's just you know my opinion on it but I did want to say uh, I also wanted to add to this that this is going to be completely a different uh different uh direction but um in life stop the shoulda coulda wouldas because you don't know um you know you could think you can say to yourself all day long what I should have done but the should have is imagining what you think would have happened versus what really would have happened you know you don't know so it's best to always remain present in life and to do what you can in the now not wanting to go back to do what you think would have worked if that makes any sense so just because you know, in your mind, it's easier for you to romanticize what would have happened because you don't know. Versus if you did make that decision, what would have happened may have not always, may have not been the best outcome. So the shoulda, coulda, wouldas are useless because it's, it's imagination. It's you imagining what would have happened versus what really would have happened. You don't know. So toss the coulda, shoulda, wouldas out the window and focus on what's today in the present moment and make decisions and choices that are going to benefit you now forget the past it happened and you know like i said every saint becomes a, every saint was a sinner you know what i mean um so don't worry so much about the shoulda coulda wouldas let that go um you know when you look back and you say i should have done this it's pointless because if you would have done it, you don't. You really don't know what the outcome would have been. There is no definitive outcome. You know what I mean? You don't know. So let that go. You know. But I just wanted to add that in, just as a you know, just again my perspective on uh, of that, or just you know, kind of a small helpful tool to somebody. But yeah, like no, nobody's special. You know, this whole many are called, but only few are chosen. The chosen ones are the ones who do the work, and that's it. And if you're not chosen in this lifetime, meaning if you don't do the work in this lifetime, then you'll probably do it in another lifetime. You know what I mean? Uh, but stop this. You know, these are fictitious. This, this is fairy tale and mythologies and, and all of these things. So there's no such thing as a chosen one or the special ones or any of those things. Um, those beings wouldn't come to earth. What, what would be the reason if you're special and chosen? What, what would be the reason for you to come to this planet? You, you've already done the work, so there's no need to return. You know what I mean? Um, so that's just my perspective, but uh, cool.